Greetings, friends around the world. This is Bible News Prophecy Program. My name is Alexander Sastrovelich. In the last program, in the previous program, I read to you the excerpts from the article written by former Church of God Seventh-day President Wade Rose about uh, Martin Luther, who claims that we need to seek a new reformation, that Luther was the Christendom's finest star. And then um, he concludes that article. Here is the uh, excerpt from that article, which is in the last paragraph. An old Bohemian psalter features a picture of Wycliffe striking the spark, Hus kindling the coals, and Luther brandishing the flame an accurate depiction of Luther's role in the Protestant Reformation. Among Reformation lights, Luther shines brightest. Yet we celebrate his legacy not so much because he was a religious hero, but because he points us beyond himself to the God who alone uh, redeems us in Christ by faith alone. End of the quote, and that was the last paragraph in that very uh, praise article praising Martin Luther as the brightest figure of the Protestant Reformation. Dear friends, whether you realize or not, this is horrific. The whole article is horrific and seems to be supportive of the ecumenical agenda that many these days advocate. The true Church of God is not Protestant, nor does it trace itself through the Protestant Reformation. And for many details, we can you can read the free online book entitled Hope of Salvation, How the Continuing Church of God Differs from Protestantism. So you can find it online, it's free of charge, you can freely download it. While, while uh, we, as the Church of God, in continuity, we have positive interactions with former Church of God Seventh-day Presidents, like Robert Coulter and Callie Burrell, as well as the current President Lawrence Stacey, former President Wade Rose is another matter. Wade Rose clearly has not shown himself to be among the few names, even in Sardis, who have not defiled their garments. Revelation chapter 3 verse 4. So God will be the judge, of course, of him and the others. But all of us, all our listeners, should realize the following. You should realize that Martin Luther was never a Christian. His sultry statements were not Christendom's finest hour. He did not truly respect the Bible. We certainly did not need another person like him today. And Martin Luther intentionally mistranslated the Bible for it to say faith alone the way he advocated it. Martin Luther did not stand up for the truth. He endorsed his views above the Bible. Martin Luther wrote many things that a real Christian would never have written, such as the following. So here is the quote, and many of you have never seen the original works of Martin Luther, many of you especially in other languages, but in English you can find. So this is from Martin Luther, Luther's to George Spalatin, from Luther's correspondence and other contemporan, let, contemporan letters, translated by Paul Smith in 1913, volume 1, page 28-29. Listen to this, friends. My heart is fuller of these thoughts that my tongue can tell. I've come to the conclusion that the Jews will always curse and blaspheme God as all the prophets have predicted. He who neither reads nor understands this as yet knows no theology, in my opinion. And so I presume the men of Cologne cannot understand the scripture because it is necessary for that such things take place to fulfill prophecy. If they are trying to stop the Jews blaspheming, they are working to prove the Bible and God liars. End of the quote. Furthermore, listen to more what Martin Luther has written. Something again that the true Christian could never have written anyway. Martin Luther, I had made up my mind to write no more either about about the Jews or against them. But since I learned that those miserable and accursed people do not cease to lure to themselves even us, that is, the Christians, I have published the li this little book so that I might be found among those who opposed such poisonous activities of the Jews and who warned the Christians to be on their guard against them. They are so blind and stupid that they see neither the words found in Genesis 17, nor the whole of Scripture, which mightily and explicitly condemns this lie. They are real liars and bloodhounds who have not only continually perverted and falsified all the Scripture with their mendacious glosses from the beginning until the present day.
Their hearts most ardent sighing and yearning and hoping is set on the day on which they can deal with us Gentiles as they did with the Gentiles in Persia at the time of Esther. The worse a Jew is, the more arrogant he is solely because he is a Jew. That is, a person descendant from Abraham's seed, circumcised and under the law of Moses. David and other pious Jews were not as conceited as the present day incorrigible Jews. I wanted to present this uh, to us Germans so that we might see what rascals the blind Jews are and how powerfully the truth of God in our midst stands with us and against them. This is from Medieval Source Book, Martin Luther on the Jews and their lies. Martin Luther, dear friend, advises his followers, the Lutherans, well, listen to this. To burn, yes, to burn, to burn down Jewish schools and synagogues and to throw pitch and sulfur into the flames, to destroy their homes, to confiscate their ready money in gold and silver, to take from them their sacred books, even the whole Bible, and if that did not help matters, to hunt them of the country like mad dogs. Yes, this is from Luther's Works, volume 20, page 2230, 2632, as quoted in Stoddard J.L., Rebuilding a Lost Faith, published in 1922, page 99. Accordingly, dear friends, it must and dare not be considered a trifling matter, but a most serious one to seek counsel against this and to save our souls from the Jews, that is, from the devil, and from eternal death. My advice, as I said earlier, writes, Jew, writes Martin Luther, is, writes the finest hour of Christendom, my advice, as I said earlier, is, listen to this, what is his advice? Listen carefully. First, that their synagogues be burned down and that all who are able toss in sulfur and pitch. So this is from Martin Luther on the Jews and their lies. 1543, quoted from Luther's works, volume 47, and so on. So it is there. You can find these quotes on internet. So advocating persecution, murder, and theft is not something a real Christian leader would do. Yet, Martin Luther, your greatest figure of reformation did that and even more does that mean that everything martin luther did was bad no but he is not an example to emulate church of god seventh day and others should resist the pool of protestantism and hold fast to the truth also we need to say that church of god seventh day based in denver somewhat officially has become basically preterist. What does that mean? Well, becoming preterist really means that they believe most of the prophecies in the book of Revelation, for example, have been fulfilled. Now, that is not the case. Hence, like the Laodicean churches, Laodicean churches of God, Church of God Seventh Day will not know when the Great Tribulation will begin until it is too late. So, Church of God Seventh Day in Denver, in Salem, and those Church of God Seventh Day in Jerusalem, they need to heed the words of Jesus Christ. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die, for I have not found your works perfect before God. Dear friends, the truth is fast dying in the Church of God Seventh Day. The truth doctrines are fewer and fewer. The leanings toward keeping Christmas and Easter are stronger and stronger. And the Church of God Seventh Day has got this preterist idea that they say that basically prophecies in the book of Revelation, most of them have been fulfilled, including the prophecies that refer to the coming kingdom of God. And how deceived this church is becoming, you have just seen by me quoting quoting the words of Luther. Once again, let me remind you for the sake of your for the sake of historical truth. So the Jews, Martin Luther was a Jew hater, a rabid anti Semite. His words were often quoted by Hitler, Adolf Hitler made his name be blotted out. And Hitler quoted Luther, Hitler was the one who exacted and carried out the Holocaust, the worst crime ever committed against the Jewish people. 
the Serbian people should know that Lutherans, Protestants were the ones who voted Hitler into power, not Catholics, but the Protestants. And those Protestants have allowed Hitler to basically divide the Serbian land between the Germany's allies and Germany's satellites and to commit terrible, terrible and horrible crimes of genocide in the Second World War in Serbia. So, Lutheranism is not the true religion. Luther was never a true Christian. A true Christian cannot be an anti-Semite. A true Christian cannot be quoted by Adolf Hitler. I want you to know this, and I want to basically underline that very important fact. Once again, if you haven't heard properly, let me once again quote the words of Martin Luther, whom many of you, being deceived sadly, considered to be the greatest figure of the Reformation and one of the greatest figures in the tw in the uh, in the past and in the Middle Ages. Accordingly, it must and dare not be considered a trifling matter, but a most serious one to seek counsel against this and to save our souls from the Jews, that is, from the devil and from eternal death. My advice, as I said earlier, is, first, that their synagogues be burned down, and that all who are able tossed in sulfur and pitch. So, once again, advocating murder, theft, holocaust, persecution is not something a real Christian leader would do. Yet, Martin Luther did that and he did it more. Thank you for your attention, dear friends. For more news and analysis of the current world events, you can find us on internet, www.biblenewsprophecy.net. My name is Alexander Sashevelic. And this was an expose on Martin Luther, who was never, never a true Christian. Martin Luther, who is one of the worst anti-Semites in the history of the world. Martin Luther, who was quoted by Adolf Hitler. Martin Luther, whose followers, Lutherans, voted Hitler into power. He voted, they voted into power the one who committed genocide against the Slavic people, Russians, Czechs, and especially Serbians. And uh, they voted into power the man who committed the Holocaust. No, Martin Luther is not the finest star of Christendom. No, Martin Luther was never a true Christian. And no, Martin Luther is not one of the brightest figures in the history of humankind. And no, Martin Luther didn't really bring any, any great reformation. All that Martin Luther and his followers reformed was the Roman Catholic Church. Since Roman Catholic... Church, as I mentioned in my previous program, has a false Christ. And since Roman Catholic Church is full of falsity and falsehood, then what Reformation only did is that they reformed the falsehood and lies. There was nothing new that the Reformation actually brought to this world other than reformed Roman Catholic belief system. So the Christendom's finest star will come soon at the return of Jesus Christ. He's going to return very soon and uh, very soon we'll have the uh, Feast of Trumpets which which actually is a symbol of his return. That will be the Christian Dom's finest hour. When the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords come back, when he comes back to establish the Kingdom of God on this earth, that will be Christian Dom's finest hours. In the meantime, we don't really have any figure of reformation or any other normal Christianities that can be emulated and followed. We only have Jesus Christ and his examples in, in the gospel that we can follow. And we have the true Christ church with their example in the book of Acts that we need and we should follow. Well, this was the Bible News Prophecy Program. My name is Alexander Sashevedich. Until the next time, goodbye friends.